Hi, welcome to the SPSS introduction for Module 2. All right, so we're going to start by looking at our data. And the first thing we need to do, of course, is to launch SPSS. Now, you want to get to the point where you see this screen on SPSS right here. It says Untitled 1 at the top, Dataset 0, SPSS Statistics Data Editor. This is ultimately where we want to go uh, as the first step. I'm going to show you how to get here. Go to your Start menu, go to Programs, go to SPSS, and open up your Statistics package. Mine is Statistics 17, yours is going to be Statistics 20. Once you launch this, this is going to deliver this piece of information right here, this view, this graphic user interface. Once it's opened, you will be queried to either run the tutorial, type in data, run an existing query, create a new query, or open another data source. Just ignore this for now. So I click Cancel. All right. So one of the things I want to do is open the example data file that I have provided to you to show you and to give you a tour of it. So I'm going to go to File, Open, Data. And I'm going to go over here onto my desktop and I'm going to click on Example Data Files, which is where I have saved the data after I downloaded it. So you can see here's my, here's my desktop and I'm just going to open this data file. Now, when I open this data file, I see that there are two data files for our use. One is the example K12 data file. That's where we'll go ahead and start. I'm going to click Open. Now, it's giving me a message that the file is in use because I've already opened it. So I just click No, or excuse me, I click Yes. I do want to continue. All right, so now I've opened the data. So you'll remember that we were over on Data View, and this is where we started at. Untitled Dataset 0. I have now launched my example K12 data file. This is the data file. This is the data that we're going to be analyzing to start with. Okay. This is the K12 data example, and the first page that you'll notice is the variable view page. The variable view page tells you the name of your variables it labels the variables for you, and generally you're the one who goes in and labels it. But since I organized this file ahead of time, I went ahead and labeled everything. And then it tells you also what kind of measure each one of the variables are. So the unique ID is labeled the child identifier. This unique ID tells you what child you're looking at, and it tells you what kind of measure it is, and in this case it's a scale measure because it's a big, it has to accommodate a large or a big range or a large range of, of measures. The assessment period tells you what period of data the ra rating was from. So it just gives you like, hey, this was rating period 1, rating period 2, 3, 4, etc. That's how I've coded this. Then you'll notice that there are six ratings, rating 1, rating 2, rating 3, 4, 5, and 6, and each one of these ratings has a label. Um, rating number 1 is idea and content, rating number 2 is organization, rating 3 is voice, rating 4 is sentence fluency, 5 is word choice, rating 6 is conventions. The values are assigned over here and they tell you what each one of the numbers will mean in the data file or what each of the ratings will mean in the data file. So if I click here, I can see that there's a little box that will appear. So I click right there, and then it makes a box appear uh, with dots. I'm going to click on that, and then I get a value labels menu, or interface, or window, whatever you want to call it. And what I'm going to do is see that there are uh, five values for rating one. 1 to 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1 needs significant intervention. 2, focused intervention. Near proficient, proficient, or above proficient. And I'm going to click OK. So I know what the values are now. Then I pay close attention to what kind of measure I'm dealing with. In this case, the unique idea is a scale. Don't really need to worry about that. 
Uh, I have coded the assessment period nominally. That means that there's no difference between 1 and 4. It's just a number that tells you what period the data came from. Then there's each of the ratings. I have coded the ratings ordinally, meaning 4 is bigger than 1, 5 is bigger than 3, 2 is less than 4. That's the definition of ordinal values. You'll see there are three ways I can code data, scale, ordinal, or nominal. I'm going to make sure my data is coded correctly, that way my analyses that I tell it to run later on will know how to work. So that's the example of the variable view page for the K-12 data set. Now there's a data view page also which shows the raw data. So what I'm doing here is I'm looking at how my variables are treated in SPSS. Now what I'm doing in data view is looking at what the actual data is. So what you can see is I have a data file that's stacked long and it starts with the child's unique identifier. Then it goes to an assessment period. Then it goes into a series of rating responses. The response to rating 1, the response to rating 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Then I have another rating record for child number one. This comes from the second assessment period. Then I have another rating record for child number one that comes from the third assessment period and then the fourth and so on for the second child, the third child, the fourth child, and all the way up to the 595th child. Now you'll notice for child number 595 that there is in fact only one rating record from time one. So I know that child number 595 during assessment period one had this series of ratings, one, 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 on rating one through rating six. So that's the data for the K-12 example. Again, when I want to open this data, I go to my Start menu, I go to Program, I click on SPSS, I open the statistics package that I have. I'm then given this menu, which is an empty data set. There are no variables and there's no data to view. So I go to the file, I open, I go to data, and I point this towards the file that I'm interested in opening. Here I'm looking in example data file that is on my desktop and I simply tell it open that example data file and point this towards the data file that I'm interested in running and then I click open. Once it's opened I have an example data file that has a data view page and a variable view page. The variable view page tells me all of the information I need to know about the variables I'm working with and the data view page organizes the raw data for me. And again in this example we have a data file stacked long where a group of children are assessed on six different conventions of written language. We're going to be analyzing this data. I will also show how a data file is stacked wide in the community college data example where we'll be looking at survey responses. All right, hopefully that will get you started. I want to make sure that you can download this data file and open it and start working with it. So that's your first task. Go grab this data file, download it, and open it.